All right, it's getting late. We've done several videos. But this one's also important, man. This is about jurisdiction. This is about social security number. I have had so many issues with these idiots that work at banks and people that want a social security number. And they just don't realize because we've been so brainwashed and so indoctrinated into give me your name and social. Give me your name and social. Give me your name and social. Well, here's the facts. Here are some undisputed facts and the letter of the law. The Federal Social Security Act, Public Law 74-271, August 1935, 49 statutes at large, 620, as amended, is codified at 42 United States Code 301.1399. The first mention of a social security number in a law or regulation is a Bureau of Internal Revenue regulation dated November 5th, 1936, where an identifying number called an account number was assigned to employees covered under the act. What act? That would be the Social Security Act. Federal Social Security Act. Okay? And uh, when we see all this stuff, I'm just going to skip over it. Okay? Just to save time. It was assigned to employees covered by the Act. Part 401. This regulation was issued. It's a regulation. Okay? It's not a law. Was issued pursuant to Section 807 of the Social Security Act and was not a mandatory requirement but simply a directory. Okay? A directory is not law. Today, most people are under the impression that a Social Security number is required for more than just Social Security purposes. This is not the case and never has been. This impression came in part from the fact that in 1943, the Civil Service decided that there should be a numeric... So, just somebody just decided one day that there should be a numerical identification system for federal employees and proposed to the Bureau of the Budget that the use of a number be authorized for this purpose. This led to the issuance of Executive Order 9397, which is as follows. And it says, whereas federal agencies from time to time require the administration of their activities in a system of numerical identification of accounts of individual persons. Remember what a person is. What's a person? Okay. And whereas 70 million persons heretofore been assigned account numbers pursuant to the Social Security Act and a large percentage of federal employees have already been assigned account numbers pursuant to the Social Security Act, it is desirable in the interest of economy an orderly administration that the federal government moved towards use of a single numerical identification system, blah, 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 blah. Now, therefore, by virtue of the authority vested in me as president, it is hereby ordered any federal department, establishment, or agency shall, whenever the head thereof finds it advisable to establish a new system of permanent numbering pertaining to individual persons, Utilize exclusively the Social Security Act account numbers signed pursuant to Title 26. Okay? Section 402, blah, 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 supplement the Code of Federal Regulations and pursuit paragraph 2 of this order. The Social Security Board shall provide for the assignment, right? Assigning such numbers, assigning blocks of numbers to agencies for reassignment to individual persons making other such arrangements to the assignment of numbers as it may deem appropriate. Social Security Board shall furnish upon request any federal agency utilizing the numerical identification system of accounts provided for this the account number pertaining to any person and blah, 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 blah. Okay. So, this order shall be published in the Federal Register. Okay? So, Social Security Act was enacted. It's an act. It's for federal departments and agencies, okay?
so they can keep track of their slaves. It's not for everybody else. Now let's move up to 74 with the increasing demands being placed on individuals to furnish a social security number in circumstances when the use of the number is not required by federal law or regulation. Congress in 1974 passed the Privacy Act, okay? Which provides, it shall be unlawful for any federal, state, or local government agency to deny to anyone a right, benefit, or privilege provided by law because of such individual's refusal to disclose his social security account number. It's right there. Okay? Section 7, Public Law 93579 provides in A1. Right? 88 statutes at large. Public Law 93579. Right? Provides. There it is right there. 1974 Privacy Act. There is no law requiring the people of the several states to obtain, have, or use a social security number. The social this is from the Social Security Administration. They put this, they said this. Social Security Act does not require a person to have a social security number to live and work in the United States, nor does it require a social security number simply for the purposes of having one. However, if someone works without a social security number, we cannot properly credit the earning for the work performed. In other words, we can't track you. The people are being forced against their will to provide something that is not supported by any law. And in, and in addition to that, they are being threatened of being denied an equal right because they don't like banking. Okay? Like these knuckleheads at Chase Bank and Wells Fargo. A private employer cannot lawfully discriminate against the people of the United States and the people and, notice the capital C, citizens of the several states who assert their right to work and the law protects them, could become criminally liable under 242 and 1983, which says, under the color of any law, statute, ordinance, regulation, or custom, willfully subject any person in any state, territory, or district to the deprivation of any rights, privileges, or immunities secured or protected by the Constitution and the laws of the United States shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than one year or both 42, let's see, what is it, 42 U.S.C. 1983 provides that a violator shall be liable to the party injured in an action at law. Ah, look at that. Suit in equity. Oh, remember what that is? suit in equity ah. or other proper proceedings for redress what is redress redress that's your remedy right there okay that's your damages that's your injury in fact okay so 42 ESC 1301 when using this chapter the term state except where otherwise provided includes the District of Columbia, Commonwealth, Puerto Rico, and then we use in chapters, blah, blah, blah. This chapter includes Virgin Islands, Guam, such term, when used in subject. So you know what? I got I to gotta slow down here. So if any of you are also subscribed to Rick W., Rick has gone into infinite detail, okay? Passionate detail about the state the United States, the jurisdiction of, where it resides, the federal government. The federal government is actually the District of Columbia, 10 miles square. I mean, you guys have heard it before, but it's right here in the United States Code in the definitions. Okay? It's under Title 42, Chapter 7, Social Security, 1331 definitions. Okay? The term state is District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, Guam, Virgin Islands. Used in this subchapter, blah, 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 blah. Also includes American Samoa, North Mariana Islands, and the Trust Territory 
of the Pacific Islands. We know what those are, right? Samoa, Tonga, uh, the Pacific Islands or it would be Hawaii. Um, what the hell else out there? I don't know if it's like the Philippines or... No, I think that's Indonesia. Um, I don't know, the Pacific Islands. Well, whatever the Pacific Islands are. So Hawaii and whatever else. Such term when used in subchapters, blah, blah, blah. And this chapter also includes the North Mariana to American Samoa. Okay, it's Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands. And, okay, so where does it say Utah in here? Where does it say Montana? Huh? Well, where, was it, where does it say New York? Huh? It doesn't. Guam, America, Samoa. The term United States, when used in a geographical sense, means except where otherwise provided, the states. Well, what are the states? Here's the freaking states right here, man. The term state, except as provided, includes blah, 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 blah. Right? It doesn't say New York. It doesn't say Florida. It doesn't say California. Does it? So they're different from the United States. So you're not a United States citizen, are you? Because you don't live in Puerto Rico. And you're not in one of their, you know, in quotes, states. The fact that states, look at that, it's lowercase. States of the Union are nowhere mentioned in either past or present versions of the Social Security Act is no accident. But simply proof that the separation of powers doctrine prevents the federal government from exercising any any form of legislative jurisdiction over persons in states of the union okay now let's roll that into one paragraph a united states citizen is a legal fiction it does not exist okay the federal jurisdiction is 10 miles square around the district of columbia and their outlying territories, which we just talked about, right? State, Commonwealth, Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, all that, okay? And my cat is going crazy. Hang on a second. Okay, sorry. I have a really cool cat. His name is Monkey, and his name is Monkey for a reason. All right, construction is safe to conclude and not only... Oh, this is great. So I thought I forgot this. The definition of state in the United States above indicate that a statutory U.S. citizen as used in the Act, Social Security Act, means a person born in the District of Columbia or a federal territory or possession and not a state of the Union. The definition of the terms of state in the United States do not include the states of the Union and the rules of statutory construction, it is safe to conclude that what is not explicitly included is purposefully excluded. Okay? So if it meant you, everybody, and it meant everywhere, it would say that. Then there's some more United States Code. I'm not going to read all this. Okay? When certain persons or things are specified in a law, contract, or will, an intention to exclude all other from its operation may be inferred. The expression of one thing is the exclusion of another. So basically, United States Supreme Court, 1981. Okay, when was this one? That was, I don't know, that doesn't say a name. 1979, here's the U.S. Supreme Court again, 1987, Meese versus Keene, okay? It's already said that the statutory definition of the term excludes unstated means that of the term, okay? So if it doesn't say in the Social Security Act that every single man and woman is required to have a Social Security number and a biochip in your finger and a barcode on your forehead, then you don't need it.